We're many children first. Speaks about it in, in Tanya yesterday and today. It says, we don't love our wives and children the way the Gentiles do. Good morning. The Jewish people should not be as the Gentile nations. That they support their family, their wives and their children, and their children, out of love, as if that's a horrible thing. Because we stand out. It says we, we stand out in the, in the arts. That when it comes to dealing with earthly things, they don't separate that, good morning, from the unity they have with God. That's part of the program with Judaism. It's a bit of a cooler religion. I mean, it's a lot of a cooler religion than any other religion. That they say Shema every day and they're taking false, false testimony as if, if they deny that God exists in Inyan Aretz also. So when we say Shema, it's all the uh, vertical dimensions and horizontal dimensions at once. Everything is the unity of Hashem. It's the 12 becomes 13. And uh, the idea is to nullify yourself to God, to Bestia at that point. So God opens the eyes of the blind. Who shut their eyes in it and... Uh, recognize the unity of God. But this is the appropriate way for us to deal with this whole topic of of being in the land, of being... How do we approach our relationships with our wife? I guess you can't say with your wives. So with your wife and children. It's plural here in the way it's said. People in general, their wives and children. We're not, we don't... The Jewish people, our relationships, are not like the Gentile nations. We are goyachod ba'aretz. We're the one nation. We bring the oneness into the arts, into the earthly things of the world, the very tangible and real things to us, where things are most abrasive in the physical world. Okay, so it goes on to say, that when we're involved in all things that pertain to us, they should not be for us, all physical, all worldly things rather. They should not, we should not do it for our own sake. But rather, you have sanctity within you called godliness. And we are going about living in this world. And therefore you have to um, have healthy relationships and healthy diet probably fits in there too. When are you going into syndication? To, I go into syndication and business, hopefully, if there is ever business again. But syndication here, I don't really know what that means. Is that like Google? The way they... I'm not very sophisticated about uh, promoting myself because I want to spend my time promoting Bestie. And I, I leave it up to other people to figure out how to get... Now it exists, so these talks. My hairdo might change if I you go to, to my 10-year back one. The hairstyle was probably a little different then. But it's the, it's the same idea. I know it's not as palpable. Everything has to be modern. It's true. I think if you're as good as your last share. If you didn't inspire people, the last thing you said, tweak it a bit. That would be a good name for a title. So what do we call this one? First the children? Is that what they called it? Women and children first. In what sense are they first then? We just said the Gentiles love their families in a certain way that we don't subscribe to. When we encounter the world, it's different. 
There's a way we relate to everybody in the world is different than the way Gentiles might perceive it. Maybe they're influenced by Judea. <laughs> I can't add anything to that. Values. To fulfill their lacking, people's lacking, with benevolence, unsolicited benevolence. In this way, the soul resembles its maker, which is the one God. Because we, God wants to give good to you, you want to give good to everything else, including probably yourself and your family. Asher chasid kel kol yem. It says that the kindness of Hashem is constant all day. Chasid shel emes. And it's the truthful kindness. Lachi bechol rega To enliven the world and it's all that inhabits it. Every moment, rock. Wife and children of a person precede everything else in the world according to the Torah. So the end is the same. But what the motivating factor in each case is different. One, they do it for themselves. So once the... You know, once the children are misbehaving, they're out with the bathwater, literally. So here we have the same relationships as the Gentiles. We have the same features on our, on our face. We, we, we have some similarities, but there's something different because the Jews have an inscribed purpose. And they're, they're very aware of that, at least in terms of their soul. So, according to Torah, those relationships do take precedent. So, in another way of looking at it, it's not to put down the natural love, but rather saying the natural love in a Jewish home is prescribed by the Torah itself. So, it has the power of you connecting to God. You're the one nation in the earth because in your earthly things, you're bringing the unity of God into. That means you have integrity at all levels. That's the way the Jew looks at the situation. So the end of this Epistle 9, which is today's Chitas, ends there, ends with a beautiful verse, which I looked up. So I want to lead up to that a little bit, and then I probably want to jump around a bit to the Lakute Torah that we've been doing, because it fits right in. Or maybe just mention the idea that it, we left off with. So the altar of Parshas Re'eh, which we, there's no Parshas Shaif team. So this, this week we don't, we continue Parshas Re'eh, those who are committed to doing this in some sense. So it says, Acharei Hashem Elekeichem Telechu, you shall walk after Hashem. What does it mean after? We always seek the Pneumius. Re'eh and Neichu, Neichu, and Lifneichem, to your Pneumius. We always emphasize the inward life, the core. You speak to someone's core, you don't speak to their, the, um, their fingertips. That would be kind of silly if you only spoke to their fingertips. It would look like Mork and Mindy, almost. Like, so here we're saying that the Acharayim, you should actually pursue. And what does it mean? If I understood it correctly, it's a really cool idea. What do you mean, Acharay Hashem Alekeichem Telechu? You shall walk. You shall have your approach of walking in your connection to, to, to Hashem, always getting closer, which is called love and fear of God, becoming more intimate and more real to you. That's called the journey, as it says, Abraham went southbound to the heat, to the fire, the, the more impassioned um, relationship with God. So that's the journey, but it's supposed to be Acharei Hashem Alikei Teleichu, meaning that the Acharayim of Hashem, we're supposed to reflect in a sense, Hasagas Hashlila, understanding from what's not, and we've spoken about this before, how that reversed the inverted process of understanding something. Here, when you're focusing, in other words, on the negative space in an artwork, you're getting a deeper 
under uh, appreciation of the aesthetic. So it's always the negatively defined, like for example, the, the species in the Torah that are prohibited in terms of kashrut, Jewish dietary laws, and not. So it specifies there the, min the minority of the two. If that minority group is the kosher ones, they're going to enumerate all the kosher ones, and you can figure out the rest of the birds that you can't eat from the process of elimination or inverted, you know, uh, learning the flip side of that equation. So in other words, you can understand something more deep about Hashem by understanding what he's not. So that's the Ahraim. What is he not? He is not limited to the way he interacts with the worlds, including the physical world. He's not limited to that. There's an aspect of Shem that completely transcends that. So that's called ex nihilo, if you speak Latin. Or yesh ma'ayin, if you speak Ivrit. Or yesh ma'ayin. Yesh ma'ayin, I guess you'd say it the same. Maybe you'd emphasize a different syllable. So... Yesh ma'ayin is the recognition that we come from what is not, with an A-U-G-H-T in the middle. What is n we stem from something that is called nothing. The yesh, the real life that we would call real, comes from nothing in the sense that we cannot grasp it. It's nothing within the realm of our ability to fathom. So it's deliberately beyond the, perhaps the defining character of most people is their intellect, at least in some sense, or maybe it's the, the way the intellect manifests in the habits of your, of your body and you don't think about it anymore. It's the same idea. So anyways, the idea of understanding Hashem from his Zacharayim is to see Hashem through what he's not. He's not, the world is so great, and you can go up the entire totem pole and it's like you're climbing to the Mount Everest and standing on the tippy top and looking down upon everything. So therefore you have this much greater picture, it's more all encompassing and it's exhilarating. So it's more real in a sense. So that's when you've climbed, but all of that process of climbing to the top, of reaching spiritual heights and having things like angels mean something to you that, are, that is real, that process is all finite because you're only relating to God in the way that he interacts with the world. But there's an aspect of Shem that's more essential and more, it's to the core, but it's, it happens through the process of recognizing of what he's not. So you have some appreciation of what the world around you is. Your wife and children, for example. That's a pretty important part. And they, those concepts exist in the spiritual sense also. So you climb the dimensional um, encounters with those same topics. At different dimensions, you're encountering wife and children. We speak about it at length. Yichudava. What's the connection between Chachma and Bina? These are ideas that are meant to speak to you. That's why I'm sorry, I could understand Hashem from my physical flesh experience in this world. That's the way I'm going to understand Hashem. So that's what the Altar Rebbe ends off with. And it has to do with, of course, Nivuah. Right? The return of the king is all about Nivuah. People don't quite get that. It's all about prophecy returning. Once prophecy returns to you, and when did you have it last? Your soul has it right now. So how do you get that? Firstly, you got to understand that now the times are different. As each generation progresses, we learned, you are, the souls that are incarnate are more in t attuned to the call of redemption. So therefore, they have the capacity to live with it more readily than someone who is born in the old school generation. They have a different way of thinking. I was arguing with Rabbi Michael, but I don't think either of us knew what we were talking about. The other was talking about. It's reality. About in what sense is there this generation gap, according to Tyre, I mean here? Is it, what was the reason for the, the newer souls being more attuned to prophecy? Is it genetics? They just inherited a better body? 
to be able to do it, or what I think it is, is cultural. So our culture is affected much more than pre we were less ghettoized, at least in Chabad, than ever before. So the cultural influences are far greater than any minute mutations of the DNA from one generation to the other. So your mustache is a little bit fluffier than the previous generations. Thank you very much. That doesn't make you more of a vessel to receive messianic promise of Ruach Hanavua, Ruach Hashem, the spirit of bestie, giving you thoughts in your imagination. We discussed how that works. So the Malbim writes that there's three levels of prophecy and the greatest level of prophecy is going to be attained by the generation immediately preceding, preceding the coming of the Messiah. In other words, you and me. So we are going to attain the highest level, and I have a sicha that speaks about that and the way the Rebbe interprets that idea, which is at the level of Moshe Rabbeinu, who have we spoken about before that his prophecy is so much different than the other prophets that we actually call it something different than prophecy. We had a whole share on that. It's not really prophecy, but it's the vision that you could see from one end of the world to the other, which doesn't have to be prophetic. Rather, it could be simply in the commonplace things you see before you today. Yes, it might be that if you're the Baal Shem Tov, you could see something that's in Timbuktu, in the, in the, in the uh, safe. He, he could see right through it the, with the X-ray vision. That's, you could see from one side of the world to the other, and that was physical sight, the Rebbe says. And therefore, you and I can attain that too, because whatever you need to see, you will see. And you probably don't have to see too many political pundits to arrive at what you're meant to see. So all of the building blocks for communication, remember letters and terror are described as building blocks, exist in the, your experience without having to go f too far away from your, where God takes you. He just sends you on a path where you need to go to, to hear the message you need. It does not have to be with words. It could be with images too, or encounters. Okay, so towards the end, so the, Rebbe, the Altar Rebbe here, in the end of the Sigeris of Kedish, Simon Tess, it says, that everything comes down in our generation to staka, the chesed chinam we were speaking about before, the, the giving of charity, giving of yourself to others is the foundation of everything in our times. And anyone who, who slaughters their evil inclination to just want to hoard, that transforms light into dark, darkness into light. And we live in the lowest, we live in the heels of Mashiach, the, the the most diminutive of all the generations, described as the heels of the body, the heels of Mashiach, because Mashiach is going to traipse through into the victory line with the pawns. They become the queens, right? Malchus. Malchus has both aspects. There's two aspects of Malchus. It's Bina, the Ima Yila, and the Ima Tata is Malchus. Two aspects of Malchus. It's Bina. You usually think Kesser Malchus. Here's Bina somehow connects with Malchus. That's okay, let's say that for another day when I got it right. And this is the way the words that he finishes with. And when he just mentions the heels of Mashiach, H-E-E-L-S, the Yazaka and we merit, Lirais to see, Ayin Ba'ayin, eye to eye, Bishuv Hashem Tzion, when God returns to Zion. So I have the English lessons in Tanya ready for this. It's a bit shorter than the Yiddish, so you wonder what they're leaving out. <laughs> I could do the Yiddish. I have it all highlighted. It looks much more impressive than this, but it's easier. At that time, the physical eye, though yet retaining its physicality, will behold godliness as it is beheld by the supernal eye. Your physical eye will see things as the supernal eye, the Mordor, the flip side of the Mordor. Is that what he's called? The eye in the sky in the Lord of the Rings? Isn't that like something you crush a mortar in a mortar? This is mortar. I didn't even know how to say it. Yes, I, I was a Lord of the Rings geek, but I can never get names right. I don't even look at the names. I just see a sign and then maybe I'll figure out the characters later. I used to read when I was a kid. Now I don't. 
So now we can see, okay, I just want to read this translation because it's actually really accurate to this image. At that time, the physical eye, yet, though yet retaining its physicality, will behold godliness as it is beheld by the supernal eye. Wow. Can your Eugen handle it? That's Yiddish for eyes. Thus, within the physicality of the world of Asiya, therefore, when you... I'm translating the English into English. When you... <laughs> that's like Dr. Block did for me. When you encounter the physical world that you live in, there will be revealed the level of certainty in spiritual perception, which is called vision. Just like you see your, your bako and eggs in the, in the morning for breakfast, you will see divine equivalents of these things at the same time with the same faculties, the physical eye, a level that far surpasses the furthest, furthest attainments of the intellect. So you have to be able to do the dance, the, the, the dance of the virgin we've spoken about, Machala Tzadik and Lasad Lavi, the future dance to the righteous in the world to come. When you, the idea being that you surpass and you transcend the, the very finite and limiting, limited world of the mortal mind. When you try and transcend that, you might actually transcend that, and then you experience something called Re'iya, Chachma. It's a vision. It's like an experience more. Okay, so I had to look up this verse. Here we're interpreting to mean that the physical eye will see what the godly ayin ba'ayin means, according to the Altar Rebbe in here. You, you will be able to see with your physical eye what the most Lord of the Rings, Mahavdil, what the most essential aspect, well, here we say, what's the, let's see the exact term. It puts it in fancier terms in, in this, actually. We just call them Shalomayla. <laughs> Here they got at least the, super, the supernal eye. He spells it out more in, in English. Okay, what am I picking up the Gemara for? Because I did want to get to that, but that's not what I wanted to go to right now. I wanted to look at... A, I, I found beautiful interpretations. This verse in Isaiah 52, 8. It says, Hark! And I like to hark once in a while. There is no word hark in the, in, the, in the original Hebrew here. Kel tzibayich nasu. Hark! Your watchmen raise their voices. As one they shout for joy. For every eye shall behold the Lord's return to Zion. So I got a cool malbum, of course. So this is going on the last verse that the altar you quoted here. When he says in the heels of Mashiach, we, when we spoke about at length how this generation is, is more attuned to be able to experience even the highest level of, of prophecy, which I'm going to suggest to you that is, resonates with what the Rebbe says in Tafshin and Aleph, which we'll get to, I think, at the end. Is the, I think that's the coolest part, so I like to end with the coolest. So people could stick around and uh, listen to the commercials at the end. We raised 25 cents, Menachem and I, last time we did a telethon. Don't, uh, <laughs> I think someone actually did want to donate and we was like, we're just sort of kidding around. So anyways, Kol Tzapayich, your watchmen raise their voices, says Malbim. Negin Mevaser Taiv. This is speaking about the proclaimer of the good tidings in the, the times leading up to the redemption. Mitzayir ki Mevaser Eimel Alahar. Here, the depiction is of the proclaimer, the herald, standing on a mountain top. But Hatsaifa Ahmed Kenegdai Beever Hasheni. The watchman. Do you have a you have a proclaimer guy, like an Eliyahu and Navi type, and you have a watchman looking out for him on the other mountain top. It's a beautiful image, isn't it? He's on the Aver Hasheni, the other border. Aver Ivrim, the Hebrew, means on the other side of the river. In the moment that he proclaims, Yisa Hatsefa es Einav Veira Hadavar Beayin. Ayin Baayin. He's interpreting, interpreting what it means eye to eye, you're going to see. Here, 
we, we were speaking about in terms of you're going to be able to see with the vision of God. The supernal eye will see through you. You will be able to see through that eye. That's like you're logging into a higher level of security it's in the spiritual worlds. You're tapping into a, the bigger, the more sensitive, uh, the deeper, what, what do they call it, the dark web. So you have an image here, a beautiful haiku of, you have two guys, a watchman and a proclaimer dude, a herald, let's call him. The silver surfer is a herald. That's what his job is. You have to surf through the terror, and even when you get old and you become silver, you have to, and go gray, depending how you look at it, you have to be able to surf, surf through the world. I mean, he's completely silver and gray, and he doesn't care. He's the coolest surfer in town. I think that's a beautiful image, and he's a herald, which is but the wrong dude. Galactus has a nice, <laughs> he has a nice a teepee on his head, but not the kind of guy that I want gobbling up my world. I'd rather let God, the consuming fire of God, can gobble up my world. Esh Eichla, we call God. Good morning. I didn't see you, Sean. Sorry. I didn't proclaim your arrival. Here, I am proclaiming your arrival. That makes me the silver surfer, the herald. I, I can't claim to be Elio Navi, but the silver surfer? Okay. So here we're talking about two dudes. One guy sitting on the top looking out for the other guy who's the proclaimer. He's the herald. The silver surfer on the one, and the guy sees him on the other. And the time that he proclaims, he saw it safe as enough. The watchman lifts up his eyes. That's the hark. Okay, I, I like he went, his hark translation went according to the Malbim. Because he's going to lift up his eyes and hark. With an E, how do you spell hark? H-A-R-K. That sounds a bit too much like bark. I would spell that H-E-A-R-K. And it's probably right according to the British spelling. The watchman lifts up his eyes. And he will see it with his eye. With his eye. And he calls out to the direction of the silver surfer. The Elionovi type. The herald. Heraldry is kind of cool. My dad did that when I, he painted like the, um, the uh, heraldry that appears on the shields of different countries. Knights. So he's going to call out in joy. This silver surfer is proclaiming that redemption is, a, is upon us. And the watchman lifts up his eyes and calls out with joy, because he saw with his own eyes. The pro proclamation, what did he see more than a proclamation? The proclamation is the Gaula. That's the point. We've said that before. I had a class, I don't know, many months ago about the relationship between Eliyahu and Navi and Mashiach. One is to get you excited about the other. And we gave a long metaphor about that. It was really cool. I don't know what Mercury means here. Because I don't even remember the title we started with. Oh yeah, um, women first the children. Women and children first. So in what sense? We said according to Terah. So I think that's we will fit in. We'll see. Here we're saying that the two mountaintops, the twin, what do we call it? Twin peaks. The twin peaks have two dudes sitting on it. One guy's the silver surfer and one guy's the watchman of the silver surfer. And this watchman is as excited as if he's to see the, the silver surfer as if he saw Galactus himself. Mercury is the messenger of the sun. Okay, I didn't know that. Probably um, Greek mythology originated that probably. Uh, even though I think Mercury is... The Norse mythology or Roman, or I don't even know the difference. To me, it was always the Vikings, the Romans had the same getchkas, <laughs> the same Smurfs. Kel sim kakibra ahadabar be'ena, the asat seifa in the vasar yachtav yurenenu. And then you have something really cool the Silver Surfer and the Herald. No, they're one and the same. The Watchman and the Herald. Together sing. 
He tells you what we're talking about here. It's really cool. The watchman is the Jewish people. The prophets are the heralds. Hanevim Mavasrim. Mavasar Agul Eliyahu is supposed to proclaim the redemption. He's the herald of redemption. So the prophets who herald, those are the prophets, and the Jewish people are the watchmen who see it. We're standing on the top of a mountain. I think the mountain is mountains of books, personally. You can interpret that your own way. Or it's genetics. Is it culture? How we're going to respond to the culture around us. That's the the advantage of our culture, our times. That's what I'm suggesting is our advantage. Because we have exposure to things that we're going to find the flip side. Flip side. We're going to find the dark phoenix variant that goes into the flip side of it. And we're going to put the opposite of the corona in place. And it's going to spread like wildfire. I've translated a letter the Rebbe wrote about chain letters. How that's a very negative thing. And there's a flip side of that in holiness. That it spreads like wildfire. Ideas can spread very fast. Just look up um, what happened before the Holocaust. All the ideas that were, and okay, the World War I even. All the ideas and ideologies just flinging up. Once you free the person, you free the mind, and then ideas just fought it out, and they're still fighting that out on the streets of, uh, I don't know, are they at Delaware too? Who's the, is someone comes in here that always tells me they're from Delaware, as if I know what any place is. I mean, I'm supposed to know maps very well, I know. It's my job, but I don't. I don't know where any places. I barely know where I am right now. Because <laughs> I'm in this. Okay, I, I, that's why I'm more, more co- find it more cozy. So you have two things. We just told you what they meant. The heralds are the prophets. Those who see the heralds, they also are a type of prophecy, but they see vision with their eyes. That's the point here. The physical eyes see a guy saying, here it is. And that proclamation itself is, in some senses, tantamount to the redemption that he's proclaiming. I've argued that before, and now I see this beautifully here. Because what are they celebrating? They're singing together. Okay? It's the belief in the message, and the messenger himself become in total integrity with the bestie himself. So all becomes one in one big happy group hug. Travel and communication is traditionally attributed to Mercury. So the idea of climbing up these mountaintops is apropos to that. Ki ayin ba'ayin yiru. He quotes the next part of the verse that says, because eye to eye you receive. Those are the words that we ended the Tanya piece with. Right? So our meaning, says the Malbim, ki adato gamken ra'u hanavim, ra'u hanavim, ki, ki even until now, the prophet saw shibas tziyayin, the return of Zion. Ba'ayin hamachaza, in terms of a vision of it. They didn't see it, but they had a vision, a machaza. Shehu ayin hapnimi, harayah b'nevuah. Okay, here he says that that is a prophetic faculty. Ayin hapnimi, the inner eye. Haraya Benuvu that sees with prophecy. So the prophets until now always saw with prophecy, but they never saw with the physical eye. The physical eye did not portray the paradise that they saw in, in, in prophecy. But I am Ra'asa We do say about the redemption that nobody's seen it. So what are we really talking about? They're talking about Mavasar Hagula, I think. The proclamation itself represents a vision of something that they had. They're proclaiming it, and that becomes the, when other people finally see what they see, I think that is tantamount to it becoming um, manifest in the world, real in the world. Hi, I come in late. I cannot see the connection of what you are saying now has to do with women and children first, nor do I yet, but we will. I know I had to go out on a limb with that. I'm just saying that that's the topic in the ninth epistle of a Geras HaKadosh of the Altar, which every Lubavitcher is learning at this time. So there it references that Gentiles marry for different reasons than Jews. Gentiles do it for love, which is great. 
the Jews do it for love because the Torah tells you to do it for love and give precedence to your closest people to you, that they come first, according to Torah. So we have an added element there that it has integrity. It's, no, it's, it has fidelity to the supernal vision. We don't stumble. We always get it right if we're trying to find the path according to Torah. And that path defines our relationships with everything, and even our most worldly things, like changing diapers, nappies, you would call them, Greg. So those experiences are called Goya Chabarts. The Jewish people are one nation in the earth. We go into the earthly world, and we bring the unity of God there too. We don't say that there's any belt or necktie in interfering. It's one experience at different dimensions, true. It's, this is called arts, the earth, the, the worldliness. But there's Goyacha, we bring the unity of God there too. So that we're defining as the Jewish motivation. And we end off by saying, in fact, your eyes will see it that way, eye to eye. Those are the words that he, he closes with. Through giving charity, through being benevolent and gracious to other people, you will have the power to bring Mashiach, which means to say that your eyes will see what the prophet saw before. I'm suggesting now, because we're learning this commentary on this verse that he quoted, that is segueing into the next stage of it. It's how is it going to unfold? So the, the altar of it did suggest there that, that it has to do with your physical eyes seeing a godly vision, that you will see the physical things in your world, like your wife and children, as, okay, you should be blessed with children. So, but I don't want anyone to feel left out. But everyone has these I, physical relationships, at least as ide ideas or spiritual concepts, or we could relate to them as, for example, what we're productive in. A carpenter, for example, looks at the product of his labor of his hands and say, this is something I begot. There is this idea of children of generations that exists with people who are barren, God forbid. So, Ayin ba'ayin b'shuva shem is the verse he ends with to tell you that through this process of giving to others, you will be graced with a vision that actually sees the truth, that your physical relations are an extension through the power of Torah with Besti himself, with God, through your relationships. So now I'm, I came to the verse that explains how this process is going to happen, which to me is very important. These, these do not remain just ideas and nice ideas, but rather they are meditations that are meant to take as a type of way you would have an app that does certain things for you, a program would just do things for you. That is what's meant. These meditations are meant to do something for your path in life. It's meant to be productive in your world. So by expanding on the meaning of this verse, we get more depth into what the Alter Rebbe was teaching you, or at least alluded to on the other levels of this verse's application. And here it's talking about the Malvin, this interpretation of this verse, when he says, eye to eye, you will see when the return of God to Zion, he's explaining what that means. That this is a process of proclaiming something that the prophets had always seen. There is paradise in the world available to people, but those people are on a very high level. They focus their whole life. They're not the, the, the average person. There are people that devote their life to very sophisticated, complicated, or even more accurately, simple and perfect simplicity, the tranquility of beyond the intellect. Once you get beyond that is more of a dance. It's like unity. It's an experience of unity rather than the, the um, pr pursuit of an intellectual um, co comprehension of something that's very abstract, beyond abstract. And okay, I could speak more about that abstract, abstract, how it, there's a yin yang there, how it relates to the most worldly also, especially at the level of the very essence of God, recognizing the complete duality and reconciling them at once. It's nimno hanimnois, the essence of God makes the impossible possible by joining the opposites. The yin yang is something that is encompassed by the essence, what we call the essence of God, it bears all opposites. So... It bears even the opposite of the world, which seeks to impede our ability to see the truth. Therefore, our mortal eyes sees worldly things. But ultimately, there'll be a fidelity between what our physical eye sees and the ultimate godly truths. 
particularly because God specifically wanted to be here in the physical world. He wanted to have the ultimate challenge for us to bring him into the world that most seeks to deny his existence. I hope that answers your question. That's the connection here. I hadn't anticipated that. I come to a share just saying that these are really cool things and I know that they'll connect because it always does. I mean, I got, I got them through a specific chain. There has to be a reason for that fact that the altar ever quoted this verse. So you're supposed to have a greater depth of understanding of the verse to it lends itself to further appreciation of the more philosophical um, ideas, which are otherwise out, sometimes out of our reach, unless we have that more visual application, which is the whole point here, by the way. It says in the physical world, the worldly application, you should have goya chad ba'aretz. You should have the unity of God recognized there. So that, that fits in all part also very nicely. So you're going to have two guys sitting on the top of the hills and, and you're going to have a watchman, which is you, and a, and a prophet that's going to be a herald. And they're going to be singing together. Because eye to eye, ki ayin ba'ayin yiru. Eye to eye, they'll see. Roi tzalamar, ki adata. Okay, so here, he, the Malvin is interpreting what it means here. What does it mean they're going to see eye to eye? They're going to see the same vision now. But one only can see with his physical eye. He's not prophetic yet. But he sees someone that is prophetic. And therefore, can... What he tells them is in line what he's actually seeing. And then it has to get to with the idea of the proclamation, which is, that's a very complicated idea. But I'm, I'm sort of working, I'm talking around this idea because I want to head there and I think Bestie is going to take us there. He's going to, I want to learn more about how the pro- proclamation, I know the Rebbe speaks about this actually at quite length, some length. The proclamation of redemption itself causes one to live with the redemption. It makes it palpable. The Rebbe explains this, you know, in these terms. And also in metaphysical terms, but I'm not going to go there yet. This is hard enough, what we're doing right now. So the Malam is going to interpret, for eye to eye you will see, right to Lamar, meaning to say, ki ad ata, until now, gam ken rohu hanavim, shiva siyan, ba'ayin ha-mechaze, shiva siyan, this return of Zion, here we're saying, Beshuv Hashem Tzion, when God returns to Zion. In other words, when God becomes something meaningful to the people in Zion. Remember the Bas Tzion, or that's Bas Shemayim, I think they, no, no, Bas Tzion, Shir Shirim, the altar ever speaks about it. The daughters of Zion are, I think the same idea as the Bas Shemayim, the source of the soul, which is a heaven, it does never make any sense, it's always before they come down into the world when we say Shechera Nivanava, black and beautiful. We've been sullied by the, the arets, the, earthly, the earthliness of the world. It's sullied us and nevertheless it's brought out a deeper beauty. So the Kushi becomes the symbol of beauty in a sense. Nava. Noi. I think it's the same word. So, and he explains a bit more. So Shiva Tzion is going to be beheld when we see what the prophets see. How are we going to see it? Because they're going to tell us and we're going to say, wow, I'm seeing your proclamation. I'm seeing you proclaim it. And now I'm going to sing together because I know that that proclamation is really, in a sense, one with it happening. I think, because why are they celebrating otherwise? He's just proclaiming the thing. Where is it? Why doesn't he? Because that, that, they're rejoicing when the guy who sees something and says, There's, there is an abstract thing that I'm telling you exists, but you can never see it. And, and you say, sure, sure, whatever you say. And then you actually celebrate it. The celebration itself is this ayin ba'ayin yiru. Eye to eye, you will see. Now your, your vision is in line with it. The altar I want to say, supernal vision is in one with your physical mortal vision, which fits in beautifully with this. Here it has to do it more with two types of people. There's a herald, the silver surfer, and there's the watching watchman for that herald the Jewish people who look out for people that actually talk sense. So these prophets saw with the inner vision, which is prophecy. They did not see it with their physical eye. They hadn't come to fruition. And with their external sense, but now, eye to eye you shall see. The vision of, of, 
prophecy will be in line. This fits completely well with what we said before about the Rebbe's idea of Moshe Rabbeinu's prophecy, which transcends prophecy in the sense that it's physical sight. This is what we're describing here. How the physical sight is completely in line with the prophetic sight. Here he says, That's what we mean this in the verse, Isaiah 52, 8. It says, Eye to eye you shall see, the eye of prophecy, the vision of prophecy will see. When it gets too good, I, my eye flipped, I, I missed the, the line. The prophetic eye will see with the physical eye. Wow, would Rabbi Chaikin like that? I've, show, I've given him sources for how the, the Kayan Gadda would see the letters pop out in his breastplate. That we had this discussion to what extent is his physicalizing, to what extent does it emulate the physical sight, is it imagination? We had some discussion about it. I can't remember which position I would probably flip by now. But here you see clearly that when, what, what we say when they're going to be celebrating and singing the Mavasar and the Watchman, this, the Herald and the Watchman singing together, what are they singing about? The fact that the Watchman doesn't have to have trust anymore in, in, this, in, this, in the Herald. The Herald doesn't say, trust me. I, this is the way it's going to be. It's going to be good, guys. And the other guy says, no, it sucks. They're going to be dancing, they're going to be singing together because they're going to each see with the power of the other. You're going to have the prophetic vision with complete alignment with physical vision. And that is really cool. Now they're going to see eye to eye, the prophetic vision, we'll see with the physical eye. And then it seems to equate it and bepeil, and in actuality, God returns to Zion. Ubepeil, he says, and. Two things happen. One, your eye sees prophetic vision. Two, God returns to Zion. So what does that mean? Maybe you'll explain it. V'kfar kasavti, he puts in parentheses. V'kfar kasavti, I've already written, kitsiyan titzar hamlucho. Because Zion is the embodiment of Melucha, God's reign on earth, Besti's reign, the reign of King Besti. The Kuhuna obeys Hamikdash, as well as the priesthood and the holy temple. The Zeyurubayan, this we'll see with our eyes. Neged Mevasar Taiv. The Zen Neged Mevasar Taiv. And this is the holding in your eye shot, in your vision, your plane of vision, the proclaimer of goodness, the mevasertev, the herald. The zen neged mevasertev. I don't quite know what that means. I just sort of gave an interpretation of that, but I'm not sure it could mean something else. This is neged, this corresponds to, this is, Opposite. He used that term before to describe one looking at the other. I don't know if it means that the Jew, it seems to be the Jewish people are going to be seeing this in the proclamation of the redemption. The proclamation itself, in a way, is the, the, the embodiment of kingship, priesthood, and the temple. Kingship is more about interaction with other nations having freedom. Kahuna is about spiritual advancement and feeling of very sensual experience of God in the Holy Temple. And the, okay, in the base of English, that's the third one. So the Kahuna is the ability to be in that environment and base of English is the environment. And you can all see that with your eyes. So that's Vizen Negin Vavasratev. That is within the power of the person heralding the redemption to inspire people to celebrate the things that he's seeing because they're seeing it too, how they're seeing it, because that's what he's telling them exists and everyone believes it in a way that it actually just becomes manifest. Because when everybody is enlightened, you're going to build, you're gonna have, the, the kingship will go to a worthy person, which is, you know, what we call Sheikh, and, and it will um, be expressed by having the return of the kahuna, 
the priesthood, who are going to have a very rich, sensual experience of religion. And we're all going to be at least vicariously. Okay, the Rebbe speaks about all, everyone being at the level of a Kohen Gadol, the high priest, who goes into Chedra Hedarim, the inner chamber with God. So everyone's going to be, in a sense, this kahuna, this very intimate relationship with God. And then the base of English was in the environment, the perfect environment to experience that in. That seems to go with a lot with the Malukha, but we have three items here, the way he breaks it down. Remember, he speaks about three levels of prophecy also, so that fits nicely. I think we did that yesterday. Okay, so I just want to conclude. We have a lot of time still. I, that's what happens when you wake up at 5.30 in the morning. You can get a lot done. I think I had a couple other sources, but I might just want to conclude with the, what the Rebbe says here. Maybe we could, we can do a nice chunk of it, maybe. Okay, yesterday I, let, I read about the Malbim on the Pasuk in Joel 3.1, which is really cool. Look that up. Okay, I don't, I'm not, it's not be, I, I don't know how much people appreciate review. You explain it clearly to me in a nutshell. Women and children first giving to others. Right? And here with the added elements, it just adds the word of Alpitera. It's not because you're so inclined, which is good if you're inclined to be nice to your family. Maybe people are inclined to not be nice to their family. But love typically, in the left to natural devices, which here we're referring to as the Gentile approach to love, the natural epitome of emotional connection called love of one's wife and children is a product of, you know, due course. That's just net nature, but nature could sometimes go awry and be not very pleasant. So terror is chaste Hashem. It's always kindness. So the relationship that we're, that are prescribed in terror or with the examples we have in our holy terror are they depict models for behavior. So the terror for us is our means of motivation. And the effect of that is awakening our eyes to have fidelity with the truth as it exists in a spiritual dimension. Ultimately being manifest in the proclamation being one with the manifestation of the thing itself. And that is simply when everyone sees together, the watchmen see with it. So then you have everybody together in the same project in a most tangible way, not just Kabbalah Sayal, the Rebbe does not leave it at Kabbalah Sayal. I was gonna have a class on that, but I think it, I missed it. I don't know where it is exactly. That the, the Rebbe does not suffice with just what we emphasize so much, accepting the yoke of heaven. I think for, the, the Parshas go too fast. I don't have time to really sink my teeth into Parsha Shaif team the way I wanted to. The Rebbe speaks about different levels. You have Ashiva Shaif Tayach, I'm going to return your Shefet is a judge and your, your advisors. What about the Shaitrim? What about the, the officers? What are, are we going to defund the police? According to this, Mashiach is about defunding the police. I, that's a really cool topic to bring out of this. The Rebbe speaks about how here, Accordingly, it's understood. For us, in the Yud Hagula, in the testimony about the Torah's proclaiming the redemption, in the verses in the Torah, in the Tanakh, state nor Bashiva It says, "I'm only going to return your judges and nit It doesn't say say your officers. Where the Torah in this week's parasha Shaitim does speak about Shaitim Bashaitim Titan Lachal Sharach in all your gates and all your cities. You should put not only judges, but also officers. Don't defund the police. According to Terence, it's a mitzvah. But the prophecies about redemption, forget about. They don't talk. They t- what happens to the police? Are we- Here's a source for defunding the police. You heard it here first on Drudge. No, not Drudge Report. He always likes to say, I'm the first story. I guess the, guess the greatest honor to be the first to know what Clinton's doing in his bedroom or, or bringing his bedroom elsewhere. Machta. So what happens to Shaitrim? We speak in the Chumash, it says, Shaitim is Shaitrim, and it says, the advisors, the Rebbe speaks at length what an advisor is. He makes you understand how it's good for you to do what the Shaitr said, the Shaitr said, the judges. We're going to always have judges. Judges are going to be these prophets, the Rebbe says, that are going to tell you what God wants. And then you're going to have advisors that are going to, and the prophet himself is going to have both these aspects. He's going to be able to communicate it to you. The Rebbe is going to be a king and he's going to be a rabbi. 
he's going to be advisor, he's going to be, or whoever you think is very rabbinically inclined. So, in the future come, the existence of evil will be no more. It will be nullified under Yetzirah, as well as the evil inclination, gone, as it says in Sukkah Nun Beis Amud Aleph. Was soll machriach sein, die Anshe Ha'am zu folgen, die Heira Seshevtim? This will compel the people of the nation to follow Don't, don't they need the police funded to be able to do that? What's happened to you? So God's going to take away the evil inclination. You won't not need police. There'll be, you'll automatically follow what the, the judges say. You'll know what's right. You won't even need a judge to teach you because you're all going to be, your master will not be concealed from you anymore. You'll hear directly from God himself. That's all mention, and that's why the Rebbe is speaking in other places. You could be your own Rav. What? Here he's speaking about having an advisor. And so I really want to have time. Maybe Arab Shabbos will go through. It's a bit... I like to get a little bit more mystical before Shabbos, so I, I don't know if I could do this. We'll see. Varum Allah mentioned, Everyone will automatically do all the instructions that they're supposed to do. Radak says in this verse, I'm going to return your judges as in former times. This is the, the days of Mashiach. That the wicked people will be vanquished. Kulam, all of them. And the remnant of the Jewish people will not make an ayla. I don't know what that means exactly. They're not going to be haughty. And they're not going to speak um, tricker with, with trickery. I think Kezev is falsely. We're only going to need judges. Who are going to take the time to research Halacha to- topics, they're not inventing things of their own, they're trying to understand through our cultural influences now, what makes most sense now in terms of the human mind, which is impacted by the progress of culture, hopefully it's a progress, it has to, it has to be in line with the terror, obviously you can't force it, but it's n- always affected, you can't avoid it. And there's different generations and different groups of people and different geographies, different demographics that have different ways of interpreting things. They come with that on purpose. God sends them into those environments on purpose so they can have their interpretation of things at least part of the dialogue. Good morning. At least part of the dialogue. Let ideas flow. If they, someone makes a movie called Unorthodox, to me, that is a terror concept being thrust in your face. And what are you going to do with it? What is the correct approach? I think people are too knee-jerk about these things. They don't think about them deep enough. Not everyone gets a chance to spend the whole day figuring out how to put on tzitzis. So you have someone who does that. And he teaches you, you're not going to need a, an officer to tell you to put on your tzitzis. They should be this kind of tzitzis, not the other kind of tzitzis. And you have a, a policeman. You could defund the police for that at least. Because that's not, there's, there's not going to be a problem with that. The mitzvahs to it, Yelchum l'chayel l'chayel un kedusha gufa. They are going to go for these people, are going to go from strength to strength in the realm of holiness itself and be able to therefore rule. And everyone's going to, there's not going to be anything impeding the people from following that. So they're going to interact with their women and children. Everyone likes when they connect the topic. It's not good to stray too, too far from that. Um... Boy, U O Y, which now has become code for something else. Look up my haiku. But you're not gonna, you'll know the pronunciation fits in perfectly. The mama's boy becomes the boy that's following along. I don't know, does a boy necessarily get stuck in the lake or does can it be trailing behind in the wake? 
think it could trail because elsewise the ski rope sinks. You need like a buoy on it or something that's buoyant. So yeah, I'm not going to get into the whole relationships between the judge, the advisor, and the policeman yet. I want to make defund the police talk. I hope I have time. Maybe Sunday will be really cool for that. I'll work on this in Shabbos. You know how to work in Shabbos? Malachas to Shemayim? Okay. So I wanted to actually just read one part. And we have perfect amount of time to do enough chunk of this to, to feel the whole geschmack of this. I think we'll help focus the past couple of days where we're saying, speaking about prophecy. I'm getting, I, w- I, w- I want to actually make, and Shmana Esri, my Meshavazar was, and this sounds crazy, I've spoken about this a bit before, and it's when I win the lottery, for sure, this is Blee Night or what I want to do. I want to make a prophecy school. And Rambam describes a very cool prophecy academy for the gifted. He describes a very cool place where they hang out and play music. They're not hanging out to just discuss different varieties of uh, botanical, organic, growth substances or anything trivial. They're there to this, to contemplate, find ways to get closer to Basti Yakadish. And typically that means meditations. So they have music, they're playing instruments, and they're contemplating, or t- rather trying to transcend contemplation altogether. But they're doing it through music, so it's a focal point. And the, the idea of music is joy. So remember they were singing the Watchmen and the Herald. They're singing together, representing the unity, the, the fidelity of one vision to the other, ayin ba'ayin. Or the Alter Rebbe is the higher vision with the physical vision. And that we related to the idea of the Or Haganas. You could see from one side of the world to the other. It has integrity. Your women and children burst. Your wife and children. The Torah binds you with them in the deepest way possible. That's the way you got to read that. And if I'm getting it wrong, I would love to have a debate. I will look at it again. And if I got it wrong, I will... I will um, retract it. I won't didact it, though. A prophecy should, would, heaven, be heaven. A prophecy school would be, oh, a prophecy school would be heaven. I think we should have a prophecy school. At the very least, we should learn to, uh, they have one that talks about the temple. They you learn about all the vessels in the holy temple. The Rebbe says, by the, way, by the way, that learning about the Holy Temple is on par about the fact of learning about the redemption that makes it tangible and makes you live with it. But if you had a prophecy school that focused on that aspect of, of the whole redemption and that it, specifically now we're more attuned to it than ever, I personally think that that could include the receptiveness and the advancement and understanding of and the discovery of various substances that would alter consciousness. So you have these abilities to get into states of consciousness artificially that I think that a brave, holy person should at least talk about, like the holiest guy in the world, the guy that's having conversations with with Mashiach. I think he should take LSD, go into a trance and tell us what does Mashiach look like? I wanna know what kind of uh, Nikes he's wearing. I think that will lift the spirits of the Jewish people. If we have, if you have, a, if you remember Vassar Gula, let me see how your vision is in line with mine. If, if I, if you describe him wearing the same, the type of Nikes that I think would be cool on Mashiach, I'm going to dance with you and sing with you. Okay, so I'm going to read about three or four short paragraphs with you. Prophecy never left us. Okay, I have sources for that too. Yeah, here it is. It's for standig, as das is a halacha, was is negea zu it in becholaderes. This is a law that pertains to the Jewish people in all the, all the times. The, the sacred Raman, the said had das, it's of the foundations of our religion to know that God gives prophecy to human beings. But again, as Amram Chazal and also our sages say, Mishemes Nevim Achreinim, Chagah V'Zacharia Malachi, Nistalka Recha Kedish Yisrael. The sages do in fact say in the Gemara, Yuma Tesam and Beis, it says, when the latter prophets died, Chagah, Zacharia, Malachi, then the Holy, Holy Spirit transcended the Jewish people. Hat Minamal Geret. Sometimes we, we've discussed or at times we've discussed them shot in them, 
The meaning of this, as, says the Rebbe, as thus is nit me batal gaven legumri. This was never totally nullified. It doesn't say it's nullified. It says it transcended. It nistalko. It ascended. In what sense did it ascend? It doesn't say it was nisbatal. It would be meaningless. If it was nisbatal, it means it has no real relevance or it's not pronounced. It's not. We, we give different examples of the use of that term regarding holidays and etc. So, nistalka aber nit batla, other pasca, doesn't say it seized, pasca stopped. Okay, do genuf, der fun was eich der nach gefind men, has shras reka kedesh bakama bakama. As it's proven from the fact that we've seen the descending of the Holy Spirit upon many people. Tells you where to look. Sharik Dusha. I think that's the Arizal. Then it says Rabbi Margalis Bepis Psychosay the Shilas Vichubas Minashemayim, which is a really cool idea. Or it's a work. Shilas, the question, responsa from heaven. This is where he woke up in the under his pillow, he had answers from, from the angel or something like that. It's a good way to come up with Chedushim. It's the um, old-style printers underneath his pillow, feeding. Also from the fact that in Yerch HaZachar the Rambam, when he's mentioning all these halachas and, and regarding the, the um, conditions of prophecy, bring nit. The Rabbim came to not even negate his man. He doesn't bring any qualifications about limiting the time factor where this process, which is a foundation of our religion, to know that there's such a thing as prophecy, and it doesn't it doesn't have any limitations according in time according to the law as Rambam rules. No one argues with that. Mishemesin of Imach Reinim, and there's all sicha devoted to that, which I would like to look up. I think it's fourteen, page seventy two in footnote twenty five. Okay, Nachmer, the Rambam shrived in a Geras Taman, and we read this the other day. The, the, oh, the Rambam writes in a Geras Taman, as the Shas Mesiemus, in a certain, Shana Mesiemus, in a certain year, there are Rechem Dart Ice, where he mentions there, Tachs or Hanavua, Lisrol. He predicts when the pro- prophecy will return to the Jewish people. The Ein Safak Shechazaras Nevuah, Hakdamas Mashiach. And there's no doubt, he writes, that the return of the king, which I called the other yesterday, the return of prophecy, rather, is a preface to Mashiach. So if we're saying Mashiach now, Mashiach now, guess what's coming on the fairy footsteps themselves? Shenemar v'navu b'neichem v'neisechem. In fact, the Rebbe records a prophecy in this very sikha. On page 792, Tavshin Nunalaf. Okay, page 792, the top left corner. In footnote 116 also. So leading up to that, the Rebbe is saying that there is coming a time where it's as it will be fulfilled, as it says in Yael, that v'navu b'neichem v'neiseichem. I think yesterday I spoke about this, that your sons and daughters will prophesy. Just a couple more paragraphs. Yeshleimer as der bier baze is moving al pia maduber liyobi inu mi yitzayek vat chilo, and we could say that the explanation of this is in line with what we said before about the advisors are going to return to their former state as bikdei mizal ken and eifnem and the giluim for yimayis mashiach that in order for us to be able to absorb the revelations of the days of mashiach darfin zayna haschala there has to be the beginning baze in der avide itzter. That has to start with our present Aveda. And this is what I keep badgering everyone with. That this is something effective now. What is it? In this times, at a level of advisors, in quotation marks, regarding or in consistence with prophecy. Advisors in a way of prophets. Hanavua prophecy. Am Shacha Eitza, which is a manifestation, a drawing down, Am Shacha, drawing down Eitza, which is advice or what I like to call inspiration. Basver Niskabel, which will be absorbed and relevant to, Bader Adam, by the person. Azai as Erhat Dertsu Ashaychas Shayin Batchilo. 
to the point that he has a connection to the beginning of that stage. So now you've joined yourself to, you're on, you're on the right track to get to the starting place. You do that by preparing now, by absorbing the message that's being advised by the prophets of our time. Was das ermöglicht, it, it makes possible, in zu öffnen, to absorb, by öffnen pnimi in an internal way, dem gilil kus bi meis mashiach. The power to absorb the revelation of godliness in the days of mashiach, sei von shaiftayach und sei von yaitzayach nal, both with respect to the ideas of judge and advisor, as we described at length in the Sikha, which I hadn't got to properly. But here it uses the word, a yayat is a gutter friend, the bestie. There's an... Wow. So I really have to get to that. If he's talking bestie, that's where I should put a bookmark. Is this a big enough one to fulfill that, to, to get back to that? Because I haven't found too many sources for Besti, and I think this is one of them. But in the context of Yoitzayak, which the Rebbe here equated with prophecy. So the Besti, I think, is now linking with the ideas of prophecy. In terms of my personal journey, you don't have to follow that. It's a bit silly, I understand, but I think it's cool. Great souls will be reincarnated during the birth pangs of Mashiach, the Ari. Shahar Gilgulin. The Rebbe says, after the Ari, we are the Gilgul of the generation of knowledge, the Der Deya, the Der Hamidbar, the Der Deya, the generation of knowledge. Knowledge, we've described, what did we say it was at length recently? Usually we say connection. Here we said, Das, our Chavas Adas. I think we said how character becomes influenced by the meditation. If I remember correctly. I don't know. Rewind two days. In three. So the Acharayim fits in here perfectly, but you're going to have to make that link a bit more. And then we relate the Acharayim to Tehu. But I haven't really got a chance to explain that properly. And maybe I'm going to start dopening on time. I want to do eight to nine is what I want to do. Try and work with me and give me good vibes about that. Eight to nine. That means I have to get up at 5.30, which means I can't snooze it. Or you lose the opportunity. You lose it. If you snooze it, you lose it. Okay, so I hope, Greg, I know you like the integrity of a class has to make sense through steps. I've been um, criticized from an early stage of jumping around, and I did that way worse. And I don't mean when I first started doing this, which was about, I don't know, two years, a year and a half ago, two years. But I mean when I first started talking publicly at all, which is when I first became a Baal Tshuva, and my friends told me that you just jump around and nobody can understand what you're talking about. It doesn't make any sense. And he was right. So I had to... My, my, my friends, Rabbi Chaim Miller and uh, Rabbi Yezer, sure, or share, um, explained to me that you always have to have a speech ready to go. You have to have premeditated ideas. So it doesn't have to take... Now these guys would take like about five seconds. They're very smart, those two. <laughs> and okay, they've been... I mean, they're famous in our, in our world, at least. So um, to, there has to be some direction, yes. But I just find it really boring if... Okay, classroom, turn to your books to page 94. We're going to follow along in the Rashi and the Kumash and the I think that's a bit boring. So I tried to take Clark Kent, I put on the red spand, or the, no, those are the underwear, the blue spandex with the red undies on top in this class. Because so, I, I, I believe in the Super Jew. <laughs> I believe we can have more fun with the tarot. And um, I, maybe it's a more British approach, it's more linear. There's an advantage to linear. You, you, it's more encyclopedic, it's more thorough, it's more coherent. There's an advantage but you will lose people. It's boring. I, I do not want to attend a boring share. I fall asleep. I can't do it. It has to have a finesse of, not eloquence necessarily, but it has to have creativity. And with, for me, I like 
haikus and his images thrown in there and emphasized. I like to think there's two guys on top of a mountain. Now I just remember that. If I have two guys on the top of a mountain, one is a silver surfer, and the other guy's a watchman looking out for the silver surfer. So the watchman becomes a watchman. He's watching the watchman. Well, who said that? Hall and Oates, I think, said that. Watching the detective. Wasn't that a Hall and Oates prophecy? <laughs> Bob Dill. Watching the, the defund the police. Watching the detective. How would you going to watch the detective? You defund the police. Or just watch them. Put a cyber eye on them. You could see everything they see. Every single one is if you'd like to be judged. Whether you're going to counterfeit money or not. I mean, if we're going to judge everybody, we might as well do away with the veil of privacy completely. God forbid. And allow everybody to judge you. You're going to swipe right or swipe left. Depending on whether... Um, you like someone's ideas or, or the way he acts, his behavior. That would put us at the, in the hands of the most vile ideologies that came to the fore also. If that becomes popular, to be a psychopath that hugs terrorists. I never could understand how Hillary Clinton could hug a terrorist, so I never trusted her. And I, I, therefore, I believe the conspiracy hit, hit, hit list theory. Am I going to, am I going to get censored for saying that? I'm bad. You, I believe that particular conspiracy theory that they knocked off people because if there's going to be evil people, it'll be people that hug terrorists. That's my proof. If you hug a terrorist, that makes you bad. These, in the time when she hugged her, Mrs. Arafat, they were blowing up people, innocent people on buses. And how do you hug someone that talks about that and supports that? And make peace with such a person. I don't want to make peace with such a person. Because they're going to just be an enemy ideologically. They're, they proclaim that in their, their charter. They see us as an enemy as part of their charter. So therefore they are by definition an enemy. of My family. And your family. And if you converted, it's still your family. It's an ideology that's essentially. That's why you can have converts. You convert to accepting this is the true ideology. And therefore, I want to, as much as possible, transform all of my experience, all my genetics that didn't have kosher food, if all Chuba can say the same. For the, okay, we read that quote. Okay, so everyone, 904. Have a good day, everyone. And um, women and children first, meaning see things with your eyes of flesh, should be guided by what the author of describes as milmaila, the ayin milmaila, this. I above and the Malvin says it means the guys who see it have your vision in line with those silver surfers, those um, Elio and Navis. People talk sense and speak about how they have a vision of something that's good. Give them a chance that they might be telling the truth and go with it and live with it and dance and sing with them because enough people are prophets of doom out there and uh, we've done that before and we've had the doom. And I think it's time that we just sort of subscribe to a more perhaps naive, but it's totally in line with her to believe that there's going to be some good around the corner, probably right now. The, the upmost bricks fall the furthest, right? And this mimer it actually quotes that. This mimer, I mean, Lukutei Tara, or the altar of it. Parshish Ray. I'm at Duff Kaf Alep. That's where I'm holding. I skipped a lot in the middle. It got very into the Hispaniness of Yesh Ma'ayin, which is really cool to learn about and to do. It's a bit hard to spend too much time on it, share about it, I find. Because it's more of a, of a process and you, you have to do it. And it's not something you could learn about it and it helps. But that's, that's this whole idea of the Acharayim, is to see how God creates ex nihilo, to be, do that meditation, and that what's, that's what allows you to behold the panemius of God. Have a good day.